Welcome back to On the Trail to Skull Hill as we are continuing the season of Lent. We continue to follow the journey of Jesus to the cross. And we believe part of discipleship is joining Jesus on this journey. So in this session, we're going to look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And there he says a remarkable and challenging prayer. Let's read from Luke's account. Jesus prays, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. The Garden of Gethsemane was an orchard at the bottom of the Mount of Olives. And it was a place that Jesus frequented. And it was a place he went to after the Lord's Supper, after he celebrated Passover with his disciples. He went and sang and prayed in the garden in a dark night of the soul. And it is interesting that he finds himself in an orchard saying this prayer that God's will be done, this prayer of surrender. For it was in an orchard that the original human rebellion took place. The fall happened in the Garden of Eden. So here in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see Jesus surrendering to God. In surrender to God, we recover something original. So here, in this alternative orchard narrative, we find Jesus showing us what it's like to surrender to God, to really be human. Let's take a look. Jesus knows that this journey leads him to the cross. And so this is a difficult night for Jesus. Jesus is, yes, fully divine. This is God the Son. And yes, Jesus is fully human and fully experienced the pain, the struggle, the turmoil, emotionally and otherwise, that the night would bring as he knew he was about to be betrayed, as he knew he would end up nailed to a cross not long after. Let's read this scene from Matthew's account. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. So this prayer of surrender that it's really interesting when you think about this from a Trinitarian viewpoint that, uh, yes, there is the will of God, but the humanity of Jesus is attempting uh, to align successfully with the will of God. That God the Son, God the Father, and God the Spirit are somehow uh, working in this in this uh, scene and working uh, in in the the Godhead. So there's a lot of uh, interesting things that we could talk about with that. But what I want to focus on is the the humanity of Jesus surrendering to the will of God. This is something that requires a great deal of sacrifice on our part. I think, generally speaking, most of us Christians say that we want to do the will of God. But sometimes that will is something that is against our instincts against our sense of self-preservation. And it's that that I believe Jesus is modeling is actually the pathway to life. Let's read Jesus earlier in the narrative of Matthew. Jesus preached a gospel of surrender to God. 
And here we have a paradigm of discipleship. The act of self-denial that comes with wanting to be restored in relationship with God. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 and 25. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And here we have this paradoxical mystery of what it means to follow Jesus. You know, the Lent experience and in some way the whole scope of discipleship, the whole journey of discipleship is aimed at the cross, this paradoxical symbol where we both lose life and find life restored. And so it becomes a way, uh, you know, that it's just, is it foolishness to the Greeks and it's a stumbling block to the Jews, the scandal that this is the pathway to life following Jesus, to pick up our cross, to surrender our lives, not our will, but his will be done. That In that act, we find restoration. I want to add here that this idea of self-denial is not ill will towards ourselves, to view ourselves lowly or to hate ourselves or to not have any pleasure. That's not what the journey of self-denial is. For as we know, Jesus, though experiencing the agony of the garden, said, not your will, but mine be done. And then he got handed over and, and tortured and then eventually executed on the cross. He also was resurrected. And he also was uh, given the name above all names. And so there's something about this idea of self-denial that, that goes back to our idea of sin. That sin is when we enshrine ourselves as our own moral center and we determine our own good and bad. Self-denial checks that before we wreck ourselves. <laughs> Self-denial checks ourselves before we wreck ourselves, and it puts ourselves in a trusting relationship with God. When we deny the self first and we default to God's will, we find ourselves empowered, loved, not only by God, but by His church, and loved by ourselves. That we follow God, if, if God would give uh, His Son for us, that he so loved the world that he would give his son for us, <laughs> you better believe that he wants you to be seen as beloved. You are his beloved. So I just want you to keep this in mind. Self-denial is not a low view of self. It's actually the pathway that restores a proper view of self made in the image of God, born into the family of God. But at any rate, it seems like a like a death, doesn't it? The idea of self-denial that you're going to put God's will first. I'm, I'm really fond of the great American songwriter, John Foreman, and I think he captures the sentiment incredibly well. He writes in a song called Learning How to Die. She said, friend, all along I thought I was learning how to take, how to bend, not how to break, how to laugh, not how to cry, but really I've been learning how to die. I've been learning how to die. And as we began our reflection in Lent, in Ash Wednesday, this reality of, of death that, over, that overshadows the journey to the cross, we remember that self-denial is actually where we find life. And so Christianity is this paradox and we believe it's true. We believe that something beautiful and remarkable happened on the cross and it actually becomes the pathway to life in following Christ. So, so would you pray this prayer of Jesus? Not my will, but yours be done, Lord. Would you pick up your cross and deny yourself?
And let me quote here from Wilfred Stinnison. Genuine spirituality begins when we are prepared to die. Could there be a quicker way to die than to let God form our lives from moment to moment and continuously consent to his action? God does not want to impose his will on you. He wants you to be wooed. He wants you to give him permission to shape you. And the life of prayer and the life of discipleship mirror that. Would you let God's will transform you? Would you say, I want what you want? Would you dare to pray that in your discipleship journey? This is what following Jesus is about. Denying ourselves so that we might be affirmed by God. I want to try a spiritual practice called Visio Divina. What it is, is you use an image or a a picture of some sort to focus on as a focal point to help you kind of narrow in all the straying thoughts that happen sometime when we're in prayer. A Visio Divina can help us focus. Just like we, we might fold our hands or close our eyes when we're praying, we can pray with our eyes open and stay focused on God in prayer. And I want to fix our eyes on the thing that I believe Jesus was fixing his eyes on. I want you to look at a cross as you pray. I want you to meditate on that image of a cross. Look at the cross. Do you trust God enough to follow Jesus? And I want you to read Matthew 16, 24 through 25 repeatedly as a prayer. And then spend time in silence contemplating the cross. Approach God in a prayer of self-denial. And some things to discuss or journal. How does it color your view of discipleship to envision it as self-denial? Discuss or journal about your picture of God the Son experiencing crucifixion. How does discipleship point you to the cross of Christ? So may we have this alternative orchard experience. In the orchard of self-idolatry, may we abandon our will. And in the orchard of sacrifice, may we allow the will of God to transform our lives. Godspeed. Missouri, cross the wide. Missouri, cross the wide.